Hello, I'm Mike from musicradiocreative.com. In this video, I'll answer the question, what is the best podcasting microphone? It is the ultimate test and comparison, but only one microphone can rise victorious out of many different mics. First of all, let's talk mics. One of my favorite topics. Here are a ton of microphones, about 10 of them. The first thing I'll clear up, before we decide whether we want dynamic or condenser or anything else, don't use a USB microphone. Now, I know a lot of people recommend USB microphones, but USB microphones, uh, to me, just are not built for the job. Go for XLR where possible. In this mic test, I will not be testing one USB microphone. Well, maybe one, maybe the Blue Yeti Pro, but it does have an XLR connection as well on the back. So XLR is the way to go. Why? Well, if you're using XLR, you will need to introduce one of these uh, Scarlett 2i2 from Focusrite, or maybe something from the Notepad range from Soundcraft will easily help you to get your XLR cable into the interface and then via USB into your computer. So you're adding one more thing, but essentially you're improving the sound quality and you're not getting a microphone that acts not only as a microphone to record sounds, but also as an A to D, that's an analog sound to digital ones and zeros converter. You don't want to have a mic with two things inside competing to do the same job inside the same space. It's just, it just doesn't make sense. And USB mics notoriously uh, tend to be lesser quality than their XLR counterparts, although they are getting better. So let's talk about comparing these microphones. We start down at the low budget range and we look at uh, this lovely SE Electronics uh, V7 dynamic microphone. This will not get any room noise at all. We'll test this in just a moment. Right the way up, uh, uh, to a beautiful condenser mic that comes in at just over 1,000 US dollars or 1,000 pounds. This is the Neumann TLM 103. It's probably overkill for a podcast, but definitely going to put it to the test. So we'll go through bit by bit and find out which microphone you like, not only testing them in an echoey room like this, as many podcasters are working in, but I'll also bring all these mics into a vocal booth so you can hear how they sound in a properly sound treated environment and make your own choice. So let's start down at the budget end with the SE Electronics V7 dynamic mic and find out how this sounds in a big echoey room and in a sound treated room. Testing the SE Electronics V7 in an echoey room. Music Radio Creative testing the SE Electronics V7. Testing the SE Electronics V7 in a sound treated room. Music Radio Creative testing the SE Electronics V7 in a sound treated room. A solid beginner choice, the SE V7 Dynamic Mic, particularly if you've got a noisy room, this one is going to sort you out uh, for under the 100 mark in US dollars or British pounds. So definitely really good. Uh, let's move on now and we'll go, we'll stick with Dynamics and we'll go with, this is the flagship one from Heil Sound in the US of A. It's a dynamic mic that you talk into like this not like this, as most people would be used to with condensers, and it's the PR40. A lot of people say a lot of good things about the PR40, so let's test it out. Testing the Heil PR40 in an echoey room. Music Radio Creative testing the Heil PR40 in an echoey room. Testing the Heil PR40 in a sound-treated room. Music Radio Creative testing the Heil PR40 in a sound-treated room. Not content with the PR40? Maybe you want to test the PR30 and see just how this one sounds for your vocals. The PR30, let's put it to the test. Testing the Heil PR30 in an echoey room. Music Radio Creative testing the Heil PR30 in an echoey room. Testing the Heil PR30 in a sound-treated room. Music Radio Creative testing the Heil PR30 in a sound-treated room. Sticking with Heil Sound, let's pick up this monster of a retro mic, the Heil PR77D. I'm going to test this not only on music mode, but also on voice mode as well. Another dynamic mic, and it actually contains the PR40 element. It just looks really cool. Let's test it out. Testing the Heil PR77D on music mode in an echoey room. Music Radio Creative testing the Heil PR77D on music mode in an echoey room. Testing the Heil PR77D on music mode in a sound treated room. Music Radio Creative testing the Heil PR77D on music mode in a sound treated room. Testing the Heil PR77D on voice mode in an echoey room. Music Radio Creative testing the Heil PR77D on voice mode in an echoey room.
testing the Heil PR77D on voice mode in a sound-treated room. Music Radio Creative, testing the Heil PR77D on voice mode in a sound-treated room. Next, we're moving along to blue microphones, and you could say this is the big daddy to test out. This is the Blue Yeti Pro. Uh, pretty much exactly the same as the Blue Yeti, so you'll get a good idea of how the Blue Yeti sounds. Uh, just it's got a couple more features, uh, like, yes, my obligatory XLR connector. I'm not going to be, well, I am going to use the USB connector just to give you a comparison in this mic test. Let's test the Blue Yeti Pro out in different environments. Testing the Blue Yeti Pro in an echoey room on stereo mode. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Yeti Pro on stereo mode in an echoey room. Testing left channel. Testing right channel. Testing the Blue Yeti Pro via USB in an echoey room on stereo mode. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Yeti Pro via USB on stereo mode. Testing the left channel. Testing the right channel. Testing the Blue Yeti Pro in stereo mode in a sound treated room. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Yeti Pro in stereo mode in a sound treated room. Testing the left channel. Testing the right channel. Testing the Blue Yeti Pro in an echoey room on omnidirectional mode. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Yeti Pro in an echoey room on omnidirectional mode. Testing the Blue Yeti Pro via USB in omnidirectional mode. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Yeti Pro via USB on omnidirectional mode. Testing the Blue Yeti Pro in omnidirectional mode in a sound treated room. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Yeti Pro in omnidirectional mode in a sound treated room. Testing the Blue Yeti Pro in an echoey room on cardioid mode. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Yeti Pro in an echoey room on cardioid mode. Testing the Blue Yeti Pro via USB in an echoey room on cardioid mode. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Yeti Pro via USB in an echoey room on cardioid mode. Testing the Blue Yeti Pro in cardioid mode in a sound treated room. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Yeti Pro in cardioid mode in a sound treated room. Testing the Blue Yeti Pro in an echoey room on bi-directional mode. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Yeti Pro in an echoey room on bi-directional mode. Testing the Blue Yeti Pro via USB in an echoey room on bi-directional mode. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Yeti Pro via USB in an echoey room on bi-directional mode. Testing the Blue Yeti Pro in bi-directional mode in a sound treated room. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Yeti Pro in bi-directional mode in a sound treated room. So that was our first condenser microphone. Dynamic microphones don't need any phantom power. You can plug them straight in and they work in most cases. With condenser mics, you will need to get a mixing board or an audio interface that supports 48 volt phantom power. So bear in mind, if you're not connecting that Blue Yeti Pro by USB, you will need to supply phantom power via the XLR lead, as will you you on all the rest of the mics I'm about to test out because they're condenser and condensers they generally sound better than dynamic microphones uh, you've got more uh, of a dynamic range it just sounds great it does pick up more noise around so that can be potentially a bad thing in a noisy or echoey environment but let's try it out and sticking with blue I'm gonna go to this rather good-looking mic from blue look at that that's the uh, the blue bluebird SL it looks great uh, and I want to see exactly whether it sounds great so let's test it out. Testing the Blue Bluebird SL in an echoey room. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Bluebird SL in an echoey room. Testing the Blue Bluebird SL in a sound treated room. Music Radio Creative testing the Blue Bluebird SL in a sound treated room. Okay, now we've finished with blue microphones. We're kind of going up and up in price range. And now we'll move along to this one right here, which is the X1 from SE Electronics. This comes in an X1S bundle, a studio kit bundle, which has the shock mount, uh, the pop filter, and the XLR cable all included, plus a reflection filter if you're in an echoey room. Let's test this in many different environments now. Testing the SE X1S Studio Bundle with pop filter applied in an echoey room. 
music radio creative testing the SE X1 microphone in an echoey room. Testing the SE X1 in a sound treated room. Music radio creative testing the SE X1 in a sound treated room. Moving along now, and we're getting uh, around the $300 mark. Has uh, some of the Hiles, they come in at about $249 to $300. Uh, this one is around $300. This is the SE2200, and it's the flag one of the flagship mics that SE Electronics produce. So let's put this condenser mic to the test in multiple different environments. Testing the SE2200 in an echoey room. Music Radio Creative testing the SE2200 in an echoey room. Testing the SE2200 in a sound treated room. Music Radio Creative testing the SE2200 in a sound treated room. Okay, so we've tested a few dynamics, we've tested some condensers, we've tested blue microphones, we've tested SE Electronics, and the very popular Heil Sound as well. Let's move on to another one. This one not so popular in the podcasting world, this brand, uh, but definitely many radio stations. You will find an Audio Technica mic or two. Look at that one. I remember the first radio station I worked at did indeed have an Audio Technica microphone. This is the AT4033A, and it's the microphone I've been using for years and years before I upgraded to a Neumann TLM103 for my voiceover and podcasting purposes. But let's put it to the test and see just how it sounds. Testing the Audio Technica AT4033A in an echoey room. Music Radio Creative testing the Audio Technica AT4033A in an echoey room. Testing the Audio Technica AT4033A in a sound treated room. Music Radio Creative testing the Audio Technica AT4033A in a sound treated room. Audio Technica has been my favorite for years. I think it sounds pretty good as long as you have a nicely sound treated room or you have some acoustic foam around you. The same is most likely going to apply to the next microphone. Before I get onto the next microphone, this would be a good point to break and tell you where the mics are made. So that Audio Technica I just tested made in Japan. SE Electronics microphones in the main, uh, again, made in Asia, in China. Uh, you've got the Heil microphones that are proudly made in the good old US of A. And we're gonna move on to uh, what many people, certainly in the voice voiceover industry would say is a top of the range brand Neumann made in Berlin, Germany. It's my current microphone of choice next to the Heil PR40 uh, when I'm working in an echoey room or an echoey environment, but definitely in a sound treated room. I am on the Neumann TLM 103. Let's put this to the test in multiple environments and see how it works out as a podcasting microphone. Testing the Neumann TLM 103 in an echoey room. Music Radio Creative testing the Neumann TLM 103 in an echoey room. Testing the Neumann TLM 103 in a sound treated room. Music Radio Creative testing the Neumann TLM 103 in a sound treated room. Yes, I love my TLM 103, but make sure you're using it in a good environment because as you have heard in these mic checks, a really good microphone can sound really bad if you've got the wrong room. So don't go and spend thousands of dollars on a microphone because you think it's the best and then bring it into your room and discover it sounds awful because you've got no sound treatment and you've got big glass windows around. It's just not going to sound great. Sound treatment above uh, worrying about the microphone. The, the likelihood is you've got a good microphone in your hand, it's just you haven't got the right room for it. Anyway, I hope this has been really helpful for you to decide which microphone you may want to use for podcasting. Just remember these key takeaways. Use XLR over USB if you possibly can. Uh, look for dynamic if you're working in a noisy environment, so something like the SE V7 or any of the higher range, they're all dynamic. If you're working in a nicely sound treated place or you can get some acoustic foam up to stop the bounce back of echoes then you might want to upgrade to a condenser any of these mics will do the job the best all-in-one is uh, the blue yeti pro because you can use it in multiple different vocal patterns and again if you've got a good sound treated room it's going to do the job you can have the uh, bi-directional pattern on and have two guests speaking in from different angles great great stuff and then if you want to go super pro and you say no mike i just want the best sounding podcast out there it's going to be the neumann tlm 103 
103 or even the U87 if you've got $2,000. Why not just go nuts and grab yourself the U87? Uh, but yeah, Neumann uh, would be absolutely top of the range. And if you're considering producing a podcast of the highest quality, uh, Neumann is up there on my list. Uh, Audio Technica have always been a favorite of mine. The SE Electronics also fare very well as well. So all of these mics, good for different purposes in different environments. But maybe you want to battle it out in the comments down below and let me know which was your favorite microphone. Now, go to the notes to this video. You'll find a link to a blog post detailing all my thoughts about these microphones and other microphones as we discover and test them here at Music Radio Creative. Uh, if you've got a mic that you'd like to test, uh, just feel free to get in touch with us and we'll get it into uh, our blog post. I'll also upload the raw audio of all of these microphones so you can download it over at that blog post and listen to the audio yourself and judge for yourself which mic you might want to use for podcasting. It's a minefield out there. Good luck with getting your set up. And if you've got any questions, do feel free to get in touch in the comments.